At first glance, the strange motorcycle turned out to be a brilliant invention by the legendary American racer Dan Gurney. His concept of compactly positioning the rider inside the motorcycle has had a unique influence on its handling, aerodynamics and dynamic traits. Knowing the advantages that this unique motorcycle has received, you will at least want to ride it. Yeah. Dan Gurney is primarily known as an extremely talented racer and engineer. Being in the same team with legends like Jim Clark, Graham Hill and Sterling Moss in the 60s, Gurney often made it to the podium. He made history in motorsport by winning the Belgian Grand Prix in 1967, the first and only victory on an American chassis in F1. Dan accomplished it on Gurney Eagle. In the initial car of the then AAR, the teams were formed by Gurney in collaboration with Carl Shelby in the year 1964. Besides the formula, there were wins in Indy on the scar. The most interesting is he's starting the tradition of spraying champagne on the podium when he did it in Le Mans in the 67 after winning the 24-hour race in the GT40. Dan also stood out for his tall height. That's why his GT40 had this strange hump on the roof. This will be the primary reason to build a motorcycle where the rider is positioned not on the motorcycle, but inside it, similar to how one would be in a car. And of course, Gorney has always been a strong foe of the so-called sterilization of the formula. The lack of innovation due to strict design rules which will become the second main reason for the strangeness and uniqueness of his motorcycle. Soon, Shelby leaves AAR, leaving Gurney at the helm, where he will spend almost his entire life. Over time, Anglo-American Racer will transform into All-American Racers, continue producing racing equipment, and eventually design its first and only two-wheeled car. After all, another passion of Dan's was motorcycles. The bike got the name Alligator thanks to its long wheelbase, low height, and also because alligators are mainly found in America. He began as Gunny's personal endeavor to design a dream motorcycle that would be suitable for his lofty height. The first prototype was built in 1980 based on the Honda XL350 and was labeled A1. Only the frame was heavily modified on the motorcycle. Dan redesigned it to lower the seat as much as possible, and the homemade triangular frame allowed him to create a chair with a height limited by the required stroke of the extended pendulum. The footrest with the controls were moved closer to the front wheel, like on cruisers. A1 started a series of prototypes that gradually improved the concept and characteristics. Despite the clumsy look, the idea proved reasonable. The handling was surprisingly good. Plus, it was impossible to put such a long wheelbase on the rear or front wheel. This means that you can quickly open the throttle and also decelerate sharply without overloading the front end. And of course, the chair's comfort was combined with the sports bike's maneuverability. Gorney's concept was smarter than creating a convenient motorcycle for a tall racer. For a long time, Alligator was a secondary target that Gorney himself worked on between projects in the back of the AAR store. A 1 to A3 prototypes repaired on time, not tested on roads in California Canyon and local racing tracks in ADS 90S. Every time they appeared in public, they were real showstoppers, attracting attention at rest stops along the canyon routes. Alligator Gurney is undoubtedly a motorcycle and has all the standard components, they are just arranged in this way, which has not been observed since the discontinuation of Nirakar in the year 1927. This challenges traditional classification of motorcycles and it works well in different roles. Until the late 90s, alligators were prototypes, and an unfinished appearance overshadowed their design. This will change with the appearance of A4. In the year 1999, Den presented a fully polished, production-ready prototype with a streamlined body. AAR has just ended their participation in CART, and they have new resources and time that could be dedicated to the alligator project. The fairing is now made of carbon fiber. The engine is modified from the Honda XR600 with electronic fuel injection, and the swing arm became fashionable at that time. The frame is now made to order with chroma Lipton, and the fuel tank has been moved under the seat to make more room for the tall engine. 
All prototypes had single cylinder engines. The aim was for the Alligator to be light, simple, maneuverable and powerful. But the power itself was not the aim of the project. The targets for the Alligator production spec were about 80 horsepower, with a weight of about 136 kilograms. In combination with grip, this promised quick acceleration, and with the narrow frontal profile of the motorcycle, good aerodynamics was a bonus. Production was supposed to reach a speed of 240 kilometers per h. Not bad for a single from a big trailer motorcycle. However, despite hopes for a soon start of production, A4 was postponed and later improved. A 5 appeared. However, production cost was unreasonably high and more development was needed before showing the alligator to the audience. In 2002, the public finally saw the last serial prototype of the A6, which enhanced the design of the A4 and A5, and sounded new with a more carefully tuned Honda Single. Greatest four-wheel racers now manufactures this 40 mile an hour AAR Alligator. With its for Gurney, building the Alligator is the realization Prior upgrades additionally consisted of a front fork Honda Fireblade equipped with Brembo Goldline brakes and five-spoke Dimac magnesium wheels. They swapped the one-sided swing arm for the usual one with double shock absorbers. The seat height, the main goal, was an absurdly low 45 centimeters. The power was provided by the XR650 single, increased to 710 cc, with air cooling, with more aggressive camshafts and a special fuel injection system. Under the engine and seat, there was a non-standard suspended exhaust system. The declared power was over 70 horsepower. Equipped mass, 145 kilograms. Slightly off goal, but not enough to disappoint. 36 blue and white copies set for production to honor the number and national livery of the 1967 Spa Gurney Eagle winner. A six was sold for $35,000 per unit, and a small edition was quickly sold to collectors and museums around the world. But what in the end? What is the alligator like in its natural habitat? He ended up as a highly charismatic motorcycle. With amazing grip and torque, the alligator rapidly accelerated to 50 km per h in only 1.1 seconds, setting a record in the 2002 cycle world tests. This thing exchanged 100 in just 3 seconds. The handling was good because it is extremely close to telepathy. You are sitting inside the chassis, another center of gravity. You can literally control a motorcycle with your thoughts. The slightest movements affect his behavior. In the end, you don't control the motorcycle from above, as is usually the case, but work from the inside. Racers and observers highly appreciated dynamics of the unusual motorcycle. In other words, mission accomplished. But why didn't Alligator become a real hit, a new trend in the world of two wheels? His problem was that he was difficult to classify. Regardless of his skill in the real world, his appearance was too radical for most motorcyclists, who tend to have conservative preferences. He was too relaxed and not powerful enough for sports motorcycle enthusiasts, too sporty and modern for cruiser fans, and just strange for everyone else. Mass production was never the goal of the Alligator. Dan Gorney aimed to build a cool motorcycle, breaking stereotypes and thinking independently, but he never intended to make a fortune from it. There were 36 serial models conceived and that's all they built. In the end, the Alligator remained an object of collection, reflecting the unique innovative vision of one person who wanted to break the evolutionary chain of motorcycle design with the help of a new type of reptiles. 